What's up guys, it's Will Sharman here, Great Britain 110 meter hurdles, and I'm gonna take you through an athletics workout that you can do from home. Here I am at my home in my little studio, and it's just a little bit of space, and that's all you need. Okay, that's all you guys need. Sometimes I've been to competitions that have been taking place inside indoor arenas. But before you go out into the competition area, you might only have a space as big as this that you've got to warm up in before you go out there and perform your sport. So this is a real life example as well. First thing we're gonna do is to get our heart rate elevated, okay? So I'm gonna take you through some simple exercises that anybody could do. It doesn't matter what sport background you are from. These exercises are applicable across all sports, all platforms, okay? Remembering that we don't have much space, the first warm-up exercise we're gonna do is squats, okay? Literally, feet slightly wider than shoulder width apart, back straight, bend down, and up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. We're going to go straight into jump squats. One, two, three, four. And remember, each time you go down, you just touch the floor, keeping your chest up using your legs. So we've done 10 of them. The next thing we're gonna do are burpees. Down, legs back, legs up, jump. Okay. Ten of those. Next thing we're going to do, lunges. Hands on your head if you want to. When you lunge, you really feel it, both in your quads and in your booty. Good. Next thing we're going to do, Lunge jumps. Yeah. Woo! Exercises after the jump lunges, we're going to do donkey kicks. You're in this position here. One. That will get your hamstrings firing and also put them on a bit of a stretch. Crocodile walks. Nice big steps. Getting your foot up by your hand. Foot up by your hand. Right, now you've done these exercises, do them all again. One more time through and you'll be really warm. So I've got two cones here, about five meters apart, okay? And I'm gonna start by my ankle dribbles, or I called it an A-skip earlier. So A-skip over the ankles, that's the first thing I'm gonna do. I'm focusing on the feet, not worrying too much about the arms. Okay. On my way back, I'm going to do the oval shaped equivalent. Did you notice the difference? Let me go again, but this time I'm going to go over the car, halfway up the car, first in a circular shape. And now I'm going to do the oval equivalent. That's fine. Over here, I love kids. It's fine having them running around and when you're working out at home, that's just what's gonna happen, guys. So focus on me.
And again. This time I'm going to go oval shape above the knee. And then circular shape above the knee. The biggest difference, the biggest difference between the two is one of the actions when you're doing your circular action, it really focuses on the downward movement. The oval action really focuses on the pull back. When you're sprinting really fast, you've got to be able to prefer, you've got to be able to have tremendous force going down and back. And that's why we do those two drills. Okay, I'm going to do a few examples of the drills going this way. There isn't much space, but you'll be able to see exactly what my feet are doing. So, first we have the ankle dribble, circular motion. You're really not travelling any distance at all. Now, oval, focusing on the pullback. Now, halfway up the calf. Over. And finally, over the knee. And then one more, over the knee in an oval action. Now, I assure you, if you can do those drills, as well as me, or even better, you will run fast. Being able to sprint fast is all about mechanics, as well as how fit and strong you are. But if you haven't got the right mechanics, you won't go anywhere. I want to take you guys through a series of mobility exercises. Why is mobility important? Well, when we're running really fast, we need to make sure that we don't get injured. The only way to ensure that happens is that the joints and the muscles within our bodies are moving freely. So, first exercise we're going to do, <coughs> laying on our back, arms out in the crucifix position, and we're literally going to take our leg to the opposite arm, like this, and I can feel this now along the outside of my hamstring and my lower back. Okay, do each of these exercises for a minimum of 10 reps or as many as your body feels necessary. From here, we're going to go into a hurdle exchange. So we're going to sit in the hurdle position. Note, I've got one leg straight in front of me, one thigh out to the side, the foot just behind that. Okay, so not here. But here, okay? Now, if you can have your hands in front of you, that would be great. You go from there and change. Do this 10 times, okay? This is great for hip mobility and also lengthening of the hamstrings. Now, make sure that your toes are dorsiflexed, which means pointing towards you, and you'll feel even more of a stretch on the hamstring. Do this for 10, 10 reps. And if you find that too difficult, or if one side you're able to do it and the other side you're not, use your hands as stabilizers. If it's still too difficult, then downgrade and just do this exercise. Leg to the side, knee up, knee down. Knee up, knee down. And do that as many times as you feel necessary, but a minimum of 10 reps. What this is doing is freeing up the front of that hip joint right there. Whilst we're in this position, it's easy to drop back into a hip stretch, sorry, uh, a quad stretch. I've got my foot behind me and I'm just gonna drop back and I'm gonna try and put my kneecaps together. Out there is easy. Together, I really feel a stretch on the front of this thigh. That's it in my quadriceps. 
change over. Remember to breathe and relax when you're doing these stretches. You see how my knee is up? That suggests that I'm tight. I'm going to force it back down as long as I'm not hurting myself and not experiencing any pain. You shouldn't feel any pain when you're doing these stretches. If you do, ease back. The idea is to free yourself off and not to hurt yourself. And finally, we're going to do a glute stretch. So we're going to put our foot to the outside of our thigh. We're going to pull our chest close to our knee and twist to the side. And then you feel it right there in your booty. Just there. Okay. And change sides. Pull in that knee into your chest. Some of you may feel a stretch as soon as you do that. That's fine. If you don't, get this knee and pull it in. But remember to maintain an upright seating position. Okay, that's the end of our mobility. Now we're going to go into the actual main part of the session. Now, if you've got a street, or a road, or a back garden, that's going to be ideal. Because what we're going to do is we're going to do a series of sprints. Remembering all the things that we've done, our foot positioning, and we're going to place all of that together. If we're going to be fast sprinters, we've got to be explosive. What I want you to also measure and train is your standing long jump. That measures exactly how explosive you are. This is what I mean by a standing long jump. I'm going to go from this cone as far as I can that way. I jump from two feet and I land on two feet. Okay. Now I landed there, so I'm going to put the cone there. Next time round, I'm going to try and beat that marker. Watch this. And I've done so. So I'm getting more powerful and more explosive. If I do that three or four times during these sessions, that's all that's needed. And if you do that over a series of weeks, you will improve. Power, balance and control. One of the ways in which we work on that are single leg hops. I've got these cones marked out here and I'm going to hop between the cones on one leg now I found that quite difficult because when I landed my knee rotated inwards let me see if I can do it again and have better balance That was an improvement. That's one way of strengthening your glutes, your quads, and your hamstrings. I want you to do that twice on your left leg, twice on your right leg. Progress that to continuous hops. Just like that. Watch my feet again. Two on your left leg, two on your right leg. Okay, now we're going to go into the garden and do some sprints. A critical component of any sprint race is the start. I'm going to show you how to get into a general sprint position. Okay, now if these two cones are my start line, I'm going to have one foot forward, I'm going to make a T position, another T position, and that would be my front foot. I kneel down. And my opposite knee is next to the foot. My hands go here, 
shoulder width apart and my shoulders are slightly in front of my fingers. Not behind, not above, slightly in front. Now I'm gonna raise my hips and now I'm in the perfect position to sprint off. Another easy sprint position for beginners is the praying mantis. So, it's a standing start, one foot in front of the other, a comfortable distance apart. Okay, you're going to put your hands together like you were praying. You're going to squat down and roll forward over the front knee. When you can no longer hold your balance and you feel like you're about to fall, that's the exact moment you start sprinting. Watch. Work on your accelerations in your garden no more than 10 times over about 10 meters. If you haven't got that distance, you can go to the front of your property and do it on the street. As long as you're not disturbing anyone and you're keeping a safe distance away from your neighbor, there's no problem. When you do your start properly, it will feel easy because you should be using gravity and angular momentum to propel you forward.